Coming up on Mountain News this morning, fires have plagued some of eastern Kentucky during the weekend in multiple counties. And as we approach Veterans Day, some eastern Kentuckians are already showing their support for those who served. Dedicated to eastern and southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Olivia Calfi. The time is 6.01 on November 6th. Now let's check in with Chief Forecaster Brandon Robinson for a look at your forecast this morning. And Brandon, those mild temperatures that we saw this weekend are going to continue over the next few days and really not a great chance of rain either. Mm -mm, absolutely not. I was actually working in my building a little bit this weekend, uh, trying to get it cleaned up a little bit, and it was very, very nice. I uh, really didn't need a whole lot of uh, layers out there. So again, I think we're going to see more days like that and maybe even warmer days like that. But you're right, we absolutely need some desperately needed rain. Let's take a look at Jenkins there, US 119, US 23. Touch of fog potentially over there. I don't think it's too much else other than that. Maybe just a little bit of haze this morning from some of those fires drifting back and forth. Temperatures across the region, we are in the 30s and 40s to start your day off. 45 in Logan, 30 in Clintwood, and then 30 in Irvine. So again, bundle up in some areas. Those temperatures kind of drifting a little further uh, to the south there into those 30s as you go Long. First alert weather app forecast for today. Not too bad. Some sunshine mixed with a few clouds as we get deeper in the day, and temperatures are going to climb quickly because the sun rises earlier. So we'll see sunrise just after 7 o'clock this morning, and that means it's going to warm up pretty quickly, but it's also going to cool off pretty quickly as we get deeper in the day. And basically, the sun sets about 5 30 or so. So just be ready for that. I know. First full week of that, so just be ready and we'll get through it together. Olivia. All right, thank you, Brandon. Fire officials across the region have had a busy weekend. There have been several reports of forest fires with crews working to put them out for the majority of the weekend in Bell, Harlan and Perry counties. Sunshine Volunteer Fire Chief Stephen Hatfield says it is important to burn safely and responsibly during the burning hours of 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Try to keep a water hose, uh, keep a rake, uh, don't leave it unattended. Um, stay with the fire until it's completely extinguished and there's no visible uh, embers because um, the wind can pick up and blow, blow an ember uh, up, you know, maybe 100 feet and start a fire, even though you weren't close to anything. Hatfield says it is also important to report any fires and to not assume someone has already called. You can do so by calling 911, your county's emergency management or sheriff's department. Harlan County Judge Executive Dan Mosley has declared a state of emergency for Harlan County following the numerous forest fires in the county. Mosley says that many of their firefighters are volunteers and may need to return to their primary jobs. He adds that he knows they have been working tirelessly to protect the community and their properties, so he hopes the state of emergency will get them some much needed relief. The need for backup support is greatly necessary uh, as well as Division of Forestry. The Division of Forestry uh, in our 10 county service area uh, has uh, multiple forest fires as well and uh, uh, their, their need, uh, their, their folks are getting uh, tired as well. So uh, it's my hope that the, uh, the state emergency declaration will uh, open us up to some help from some other agencies you may also report illegal open burning while the burn ban is in effect to the Harlan County Sheriff's Department at 606-573-1313 or emergency management at 606-573-6082. Kentucky State Police are investigating a deadly crash out of Owsley County. The crash happened on Friday around 8 p.m. on Kentucky 30 near Kentucky 1411. Dennis Neely, 69 of Boonville, was traveling east on Kentucky 30 when his vehicle crossed the center line. He then ran into Cecil R. Turner, who was traveling west. The crash resulted in deadly injuries for Neely, who was pronounced dead by the Jackson County coroner. Turner was taken to Kentucky River Medical Center for non-life-threatening injuries. 
We are quickly approaching Veterans Day and some Eastern Kentucky communities are already starting to pay tribute to those who have served. WIMT's Jack Dimler was in Laurel County for their annual Veterans Celebration. Taking the time to honor those who served. Well, you know, the uh, county having their Veterans Day celebration today, the parade and all that. We owe the veterans so much. Community members gathered outside Laurel County Courthouse to celebrate their annual Veterans Day celebration, honoring veterans like James Roark, who served 16 years in the military and told his father he was going to serve at an early age. But I told him one day at nine year old that I was going to join the military. A decision he made after meeting a veteran who served in the Vietnam War. We're talking with him and sat with him a lot of times. He didn't talk about a whole lot of things, but he was an enjoyable man to talk with. His name was Steve Spurlock, and I enjoyed talking with him. So my mind was set up uh, at that time to join the service. And is now honored for his sacrifice. It's very important. I, I, it shows me that there's still some people out there that does show the respect, uh, and there's some people that, that give the honor where it needs to be but a lot of veterans that sure need a lift up at times. Being honored by people of all generations. Each and every person owns, owes veterans everything for what we have in our country. Taking time to celebrate those who risked their lives. In Laurel County, Jack Demler, WIMT Mountain News. A nonprofit in Madison County is serving unhoused and low income Kentuckians in their community. The group hosted a fundraising event Saturday to prepare for the needs of the upcoming winter season. Madison Home Incorporated hosted their first Madison Homecoming Gala in Richmond. The gala is just one of the ways the organization is working to help support the unhoused community. We have homeless shelters here in Richmond. Uh, they're called church buildings. Uh, these church buildings weren't really used uh, during the nights and they were still heated and safe and somewhat comfortable. So we decided uh, four years ago, we will start a program, a ministry to get the homeless off of the street. Sloan says that the goal is to give a sense of home to those struggling to find a place to call their own. Early voting came to a close this weekend, and now Election Day is just one day away. Samantha Valentino shows us the National Transformative Justice Coalition rolled into Lexington Saturday to do their part to increase voter turnout. Go out and your tell the vote story. is your voice. That's the best way to exercise your voice is to vote. Make them hear you. The National Transformative Justice Coalition's John Lewis Make Good Trouble Voter Cade traveled to Lexington on Saturday. It's here today. They're going to voter cade, go through the streets, go around telling people to vote. This is what the TJC is all about. This is why our Gen Z's have come out today to support the folks here in Kentucky. It's a joint nonpartisan effort with local leaders to make sure people know their vote matters. If we don't have democracy, what do we have? You can't stop the revolution. You can't stop the revolution. You can't stop the revolution. That we could have a whole lot of other things, but for almost 250 years in this country, we've had democracy. And we have to insist that democracy is the order of the day. And that is, is that everybody has the right to vote. While trying to increase voter turnout, the campaign is also working to raise awareness about felon voting rights and felony expungement and the ongoing efforts to increase eligibility for both so more people can get out and vote. Make them hear you. Make them hear you. If you don't do anything else, make them hear you. If you're part of the story, get out there and vote. Your vote does matter. Yes. All votes matter. Yes. Black votes matter. Get out there and change the course of history by participating in this democracy. In Lexington, Samantha Valentino, WKYT. Election Day is tomorrow, November 7th. Polls are open from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Today, the North Lexington YMCA hosted its second annual Fall Fit Fest, welcoming in community members to support their Live Strong program. It's a fitness course for those overcoming cancer battles. 
The free event brought in people who want to participate in things like hip hop classes, water aerobics, and even a chair exercise course. They did also collect donations. Their current goal is to raise $3,000 to fund the program. We want to get people moving and no, no matter what uh, their ability is, wherever they're coming in from, um, we want to meet them where they are, whether they, they need to start in the water because of a bone or joint challenge, if they're ready to, to do some more high impact stuff like we see behind me, that's fine as well. If you were unable to attend but still want to show your support, you can visit the YMCA of Central Kentucky's website to donate to the Livestrong program. Six eleven here on this Monday morning. We continue to track some dry air, some cool air too. We had to Pikeville this morning, forty two over there. That's one of our warmer spots as we head through the first part of your Monday, and we we'll take a look at temperatures, and they are in the thirties and forties this morning. Forty five in Logan is the warmest spot in the region. A tie for thirty, Irvin and Clintwood, the coldest, but a lot of mid to upper thirties and low to mid forties across the region. Day planner, we're going to see those temperatures soar quickly because the sun is coming up earlier today. Day. Since we changed the time back a little bit, about 72 this afternoon, so it's going to be another nice day with a mix of sun and clouds. Olivia? Thank you, Brandon, and thanks for joining Mountain News this morning. More news is on the way. When we return, Israeli military officials say they are allowing transport for civilians in Gaza as others continue to reject the notion of a ceasefire.